Hello and welcome, I am Arumba. Thank you for joining me. Let's play some more Aurora 4X. Alright, so this is my second recording session and we're gonna record just one episode today and we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do stuff, work together. It's gonna be fun. Alright, so a few things. Um, first thing, I renamed Fred Wester to Fred Wester. Because his name is Fred Wester, not Westerhouse. I don't know where the house came from. In my mind, it was Westerhouse. That's not correct. The uh, CEO of Paradox is not Fred Westerhouse, it is Fred Wester. Right, so, um, I was also looking at my ships a little bit. And, uh, hold on. Apparently, for some reason, my, uh, there we go. There we go. Now it's working. So, I made a go-to copy because I, uh, alright, I don't like the fact that, uh, we only have 6.3 billion kilometers of range. I do think that, like, short-term, that's gonna be plenty, but we are, we're probably gonna want this ship to be at least somewhat usable for other tasks as well. So, adding a little bit more range, a couple extra, um, what I did is I just added three more fuel storage, taking up to four. It barely weighs anymore. 3150 versus 313350. Ah, uh, shoot. You know what? All my all my darn windows are not working because of the way that I loaded this up. So let's just let's just close them all out and then start fresh. Here. F3. Thank you. There we go. Now it's working. Yeah, and we can handle that size. So we're going to go here. We're going to go to our shipyard tasks. We're going to cancel our first go-to. I don't think we lose anything by having done that. We'll go to our ship designs. We're going to go to the go to copy, lock design. We're going to go to our shipyard now. And I believe that the commercial shipyard should be able to make both. No, can't. Interesting that it can't make both. It's going to cost 39.4, 18th of September. I'm willing to wait. I think that we just wait until it can actually make that. Retool to the go-to copy. Because I do think we're going to want a little bit more range. Now one thing that uh, we are going to do is we're not going to send nearly as many people to the moon as uh, maybe I had originally planned. I do have plenty of available infrastructure on Earth. I think we have 2,000? Yeah. We're only going to send like 500 to 1,000 to the moon. Because with a thousand, I believe we'll be able to support five million people. We don't want to have more than ten million people just yet, because that's going to require us to do defenses. We'll do that soon. But what we want to do is just get a few people on a bunch of planets as well, because we'll get more annual growth rate. Um, it's like up to ten percent growth rate on planets. So, as far as research goes, we're working on terraforming rate right now. That's almost done. Let's uh, advance time a little bit. Get this out of the way. The one drawback to recording a, a single episode each day is that I'm probably going to have some issues remembering everything that I'm trying to do every time we load it up. Also have a list of names that we can use for future characters. So, uh, let's see. Terraforming rate went up. A lot of people commenting on building more research labs. That is probably something we do want to do. Asteroid mining module. It's a ship component that allows a ship to perform the same task as an automated mine. I'm, I'm kind of liking the idea of doing that, or allowing civilians to uh, to ship around my stuff for me. I mean, automated mines are good. I'm curious to see what the automated, the, uh, the asteroid mining module costs to put onto a ship and how big it is. How many you could actually throw onto one ship. Alpha shields, damage control, high density duranium armor would lower the weight of our ships. Who do we have that's good at defense systems? Ken Ham. He's pretty good at it. Okay. A lot of people are also suggesting that our very first um, set of military ships should be missile-based. I really want to do um, like kinetic weapons or lasers, but I understand why why we need to do missiles. Apparently, missiles are just they're a little bit complicated setup, but they can fire from such huge range, you know. All right. So at this point, I'm leaning toward. Um, Probably trying to knock out a better engine or the, uh, what was it? High density geranium armor. Let's start with a high density geranium armor. It's not going to take very long. February 21st. It's only like three or four months. That's with, uh, 10 research labs. We need more than that. What is our industry building right now? Another 20 research labs. Excellent. Um, that seems like a lot, so that'll take us up to 30. And I just want to check our wealth, make sure that we can support that. 
if right now over the last year we're, we've got a, a pretty significant increase in income so I think we can handle that yeah okay so that's good what else can we do we can do nothing for now wait five days Apparently, um, there is an option somewhere in here. Race details, I think? Was it? We're not going to worry about changing this stuff. I'm not really that worried about that. It doesn't really... Well, let's see if we can find a better flag. Um, there's lots of flags available. And they're all real flags. I think. Well, most of them. You know, let's just let's see what this one looks like. United Systems. That looks cool. And uh, who is that? That's like what? I, I can't remember the name of the actor. I know he's from Star Wars or Star Trek or something important, you know. <laughs> Luke Skywalker. I wonder how this guy gets away without having to worry about copyright infringement. <laughs> well, it's probably easy, actually, because he doesn't charge for his game. His game is free. If he tried to sell it using images from other things, he'd probably run into some issues. A lot of these look very, you know, very distinctly not human. Um, I, I like this. We are Space Vikings. <laughs> Empire name. Let's rename ourselves Space Vikings. The theme is Vikings. Is there Vikings in here? There's no Vikings in here. We'll still stick with Terran Veneration. Commander name's Viking. No. Okay, so training level. Is this the one? Set level of racial training. Default equals 1. Every level adds 100 to grade points of Academy Crewmen. Academies produce 1,000 training per level. Crewmen per year. Max level is 5. So, right now, we're, we're spitting out lots of people that are not very good. This is for combat pilots. Um, as we get more Academies, we can increase our training level so that we get fewer people that have higher skills. So that is something that we'll try doing at some point in the future. Um, but for now... Um, and then this is also where we can see our base stats for like sensor strength, research rate, shipbuilding, and all that stuff. Um, so that's cool. Oh, is that also? Did I just see an option select tune? Okay, so you can run music apparently from from in there. All right. Anyway, uh, we've retooled to the uh, the go to copy class. So now we are going to go to our shipyard and we're going to queue up from BMW. Instruct the uh, F2 go to copy. And actually now it can actually build. You can build both. Interesting. Please don't tell me that I was looking at the wrong shipyard earlier and it could have built it previously as well. I, I'm not sure. But make the F2 go to copy. Now we'll go and we'll delete the F2 go to. F, F, FT go to copy. Delete that one. Rename you. We have a little bit more fuel. I feel like that's going to be it's going to be a good thing in the long run. Okay, so five day ticks until we get our first ship done. Looks like a ship has completed its shore leave. And what are the ships currently doing right now? They have no orders, no tasks. And it's just two GE discoveries. Had I not um, designed a grav survey ship? I forget now. Let's copy the discovery. No, we don't have we don't have a grav survey yet. We don't really need it yet either. Oh, right, the inactive research lab. I feel like uh, research labs should just automatically go to a task. Like you could specify like a button. You know, new research labs get applied to this this task. That way, you don't have to do it every single time one of them gets built. Hal Ferguson. Ken Ham has completed research into high-density duranium armor. Of course, as we're building new ships, now we have better armor. It's always going to happen. It's going to constantly be a problem. So sensors and fire control. Um, to get grav sensors. Hmm. I thought we had already researched it. Why can we not build grav sensors? 
Let's just try it. New ship. Design view. Own tech only. Group components. I'm just missing something. I just don't remember what it is. Nothing in these ones. I had started fuel storage research at some point. Improved command and control is the thing that lets, lets us make the sector command, which we do want to get pretty soon. 5,000 points is quite a bit of an investment at this point, though. Oh, we need jump point theory before we can... It doesn't say it in the description, but you need jump point theory before you can make grab sensors. But before we do that, before we worry about hopping off to another planet, let's uh, let's knock out some some more research here. Sorry, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you're you're getting kind of outclassed here by Thomas O'Connor. Let's go rename him. Scientists, Thomas O'Connor. And my list of names, I've got, uh, okay, some prominent scientists, right? Uh, let's go with uh, Richard Dawkins. Okay. Wait another ship. We have another research lab done. I like five day ticks. Maybe it's a little bit slower gameplay, but um, I don't know. I just kind of like to, to really micro and minimatic, you know, just try to pay close attention to what's happening. Go to copy 001. They didn't rename it, apparently. It's still assigned to the FT Go 2, but the ship, the name stayed the same, apparently. So we have a new ship in the shipyard task group called the FT, FT Go 2 Copy 001. Let's rename, if we can, some, from somewhere in here. Can you not do it from here? Probably have to do it from here. There we go. The FT go to 001. Great, it's done. Okay, so we're going to put you into our logistics task group. Uh, we'll grab you. We'll say detach. We will rename the task group to logistics. For the most part, I probably am going to have like one primary logistics task group that's just going to be set to move stuff around. Um, I think that it can be programmed to move things around automatically. Default orders. No, surveys is not what we want. Move to entry point, refuel, load colonists. Pick up automated mine from population. Deliver automated mine to mining colony. Yeah, so like I could do pick up and deliver. How would it know where to take them, though? Hmm. Let's not worry about automating it just yet. Maybe people in the comments can help explain those two a little bit better. So for now, though, what we're going to do is just give it a manual order. We're going to say, go to Earth. Uh, actually, you're already at Earth, aren't you? We shouldn't need that. So, on Earth, we want you to load infrastructure. And, uh, we want to have a maximum amount to load. For cargo loading orders, this is the maximum amount of cargo that we loaded. If left blank or set to zero, the maximum cargo will be loaded. Um, I believe if I... Order delay. What's this one? Oh, do you have a delay? That's silly. Well, we want to move... Let's start with like 500. And then if I say... Then go to Luna and unload infrastructure. And then say cycle moves. I believe that this will count down as it's doing it, and it will only move 500 total. Or, repeat the entire set of orders a number of times equal to the number of adjacent. Only possible if start and finish systems are identical. I guess we'll test it. Well, well, let's just test it a little bit.
I mean, it's not going to have to move very far. And unfortunately, I can't really say that zoom in. Load infrastructure to Earth. Okay, so let's just do like a you know one hour one one hour tick for now. Logistics task group. Time remaining one day. Right, because the ship itself, as we built it. Class comment. That's just a test design that I was using. Uh, the go-to has a load time of one day, one hour. So, let's advance one day. And now it is already unloading. Let's check its orders. And no, it does not have any information about maximum load. But if we check it, um, I believe we can actually see how much is on there. F Four opens up individual no F6 individual ships FT go to class we can see it's uh, cargo available capacity 2500 apparently it, I guess it's technically empty already even though it's still unloading is that basically what's happening now I believe so all right well let's wait uh, one more day we can just confirm how much it moved. On Luna, it has dropped off 10 infrastructure. So apparently each one infrastructure is 2,500 size. Okay. Now, I'm concerned that it's not remembering this. So let's, instead of doing it this way, um, if I wanted to move 500, 500 divided by... 10 per trip is obviously going to be 50 trips, and it's already done one trip, so let's have it do 49 trips. Like that. And that should move over 500 infrastructure. That's one way of doing it. Alright, um, from there then, I think we can actually go and do some other stuff. I'm curious, since um, upgrading the armor is going to reduce the weight. If I go now into the ship designer and I go to the go to class, I, I make a, a copy and then I do new armor. Yeah, we shaved off another 150 tons. Makes it a little tiny bit faster. And then just out of curiosity, in the shipyard, can the shipyard build the new one? It cannot. Hmm. Maybe it, does it just need to update or something? There is a way that you can see which ships will also be like buildable. Ships in class? No. I don't I don't remember. Somewhere you can see like which other ships will be comparable. But I would have assumed that since it's the basically the exact same ship, it just weighs a little tiny bit less than one than the one that it's currently purposed for. Maybe it's because it's more advanced armor that it has to it has to re get repurposed. I guess that would make some some sense. If you were to retool for the go-to copy, it's another 95 points, yeah. Alright, well, don't do that, just do continual capacity expansion again. Why don't we get you up to, uh, a little bit more. Got a little bit of a stockpile of resources, but we're gonna want to get our asteroid colony started up. So let's go back to five-day ticks for now. We have a new research lab, cool. Third of July versus the fifth of July. That doesn't really save very many very much time, does it? Oh, it's because it's knocking it out next month. So right now it's the thirteenth. Yeah, we'll just we'll just wait till the research is done. I'm still a big fan. Logistics task group has completed its orders. Wow. Did it actually move over 500? Oh, okay, apparently did it 510 times. Probably because there was already some on there. Uh, let's get you working on taking stuff to Mars now. 
So I think okay, I think I've just learned how to handle this a little bit easier. So logistics task group. Out of curiosity, if I had two ships in the task group and I did the orders the exact same way, would I end up moving a thousand? Or would Yeah, I would, because the ships would move together. Why do you have a negative four grade bonus? Hmm. Anyway, um Alright, go to Earth. Load infrastructure. Go to Mars. And unload infrastructure. Repeat. 50 times including? Or maybe that's... I'm assuming... Well, we'll find out if you need to specify 49 times of what's already in there or 50 times of what's already in there. Probably 50 of what's already in there. But yeah, move a thousand infrastructure to Mars now. And then what else was colonizable in our solar system? I don't think there was much. I think it's just those two to start. So we're looking for low colony cost. Um, we've got Earth, Luna, and Mars, and that's it. Like we could, we could colonize some of these other things with lots of terraforming. Um, there's also a button, I believe, for potential colonies. Yeah, it's just those three for now. So let's work on those three. Well, we're, we're, we're yeah, we're working on Earth totally. Okay, slightly better engine tech. I think from this point, we need to start getting either the better engine or start working on jump point theory. Before we do jump point theory, I'd really like to get my colonies up or operational. So let's do uh, this guy. You are not good at that, Martin. I know you want to, but no. Oh, bad reactor technology. Richard Dawkins, he's the guy. 21st of January of next year. So about six months we can get the reactor technology. Uh, we could design a new engine now, but I'm not going to do that yet. And a civilian mining colony has been established on Wolf Harrington. Okay. That's our first one, I think. So we can see civilian mining colonies here. We got one civilian mine. Really good access here, and it's Duranium. So I think we're going to buy their stuff. Civilian mining comp complexes have a mining output equivalent to 10 automated mines. Okay, so the mineral output for these complexes can be purchased for 250 wealth per year for each complex. There's a single complex on this planet, so the total annual purchase cost is 250 wealth. Or we could not do that and have the complexes send their output to the civilian sector, which will yield 125 wealth per annum. So basically, if you have money and you want the resources, you purchase the mineral output. So we're going to get, it's equivalent to having 10 mining, I mean, 10 ground-based mines is the equivalent because they've got that. So they're producing 120 per year. Um, annual production of 120, it's, it's fine. Um, we don't actually have a mass driver here. We don't need one just yet, but we'll need to get one out there someday to start shipping that stuff over. A 75 engine power nuclear thermal engine on Discovery 01 has suffered a maintenance failure. Repairs have been carried out that require. Twenty-eight point one two five maintenance supplies. Interesting. Okay. So there were a lot of people who commented in the first couple of videos about whether or not to make that first ship into a uh, military ship or not. Um, I probably could have gone and I could use a commercial class engine for better fuel efficiency and range. And then just instead of uh, instead of making it a military engine to class it as a military ship, I could have just thrown some some sort of military equipment on there. But the thing is that I wasn't sure that we actually had any military equipment at the time. It'll work out all right. White House Transport Alliance has launched a new White House Huge F-1 class freighter. Now, something that I think is really cool is you can actually inspect the ships um, that they're making. So let's, uh, again, delete the go-to copy. We're not going to worry about that just yet. But show civilian designs, and then you can go in here and you can see they've got three designs already. The White House Huge F-1. So they've launched one of these huge F-1 class ships, and we can see what's on it. This has five cargo hold, five standard cargo holds, 40 engines with 62.5 engine power each. 
And this is their commercial nuclear thermal engine. Um, I can't use their tech. They've actually used our upgraded armor, high-density geranium armor. And so this ship that they've launched has a speed of 693 and can move five times as much per, sh per haul as my, my cargo ship. Only has a 10.8 billion range. Much larger fuel capacity. Uh, looks like they used the larger fuel. No, they just have 23 fuel storages on there. So they built a pretty damn big ship. It's 180,000 tons. Damn, that's a big ship. So yeah, we're going to let them do the, uh, the infrastructure hauling, I think, um, for the most part. How is our task group doing with its job anyway? Still has quite a bit to do, apparently. On uh, Mars, we currently have 110 infrastructure. We need to start a colony here. Oh, apparently we already have... It's already classed as a colony, is it not? Okay, yeah, I've already said it as a colony. Well, soon we should see people moving, uh, moving some bodies over. Okay. We can actually see the their ship right there. Move to Earth trade location. It doesn't have any trade to do, so it's just it's just moving, following Earth. Soon. Soon the, uh... These people will be, um, active. So we need to go to shipping lanes. The White House Transport Alliance. Let's give them some wealth. So they can build more ships. Hopefully they'll build a colony ship next. And we've got the Pebble Bed Reactor Technology. So let's go and research now the new engine. The Nuclear Pulse Engine Technology. November 11th. Okay. We already have another research lab just got finished. Up to 15 now. Let's do 30 day advances. It's not a huge amount that's happened in this episode. 2,000 tons has been added to SpaceX. I'd like to get that guy up to like 10,000, I think. Maybe even 20. So let's just add another two for now. Reassignment. Another research lab is done. A little bit tedious having to add all the research labs one by one as they get completed, but... It is what it is. I think eventually we'll reach a point where we don't really need more research labs. I mean, maybe not. And there's nuclear engine technology. Okay, again, probably before we design a new engine, we would like to knock out, like, better, better uh, fuel consumption. But, um, no, I think we're going to do jump point theory for now. I think it's probably time. No, Martin, he's really pesky. He really wants to be the guy doing the research, doesn't he? Alright, so we have a better engine. It's good. I did build a couple mass drivers a long time ago, didn't I? We have two. Let's, let's request the civilian. Let's get the civilian ship doing its job, right? So, uh, the civilian mining colony has this much in stockpile. 506 tons of stuff. It's not very much. Um, but let's go ahead and even though it's, you know, whatever, let, let's let's set this one up. So we want to request a mass driver. We want to demand a mass driver on Wolf Harrington, add a contract. And then on Earth, we want to supply a mass driver. So it's going to cost me... Um, I was reading about this on the wiki. It costs you a certain amount of wealth per contract to have the civilian sector move stuff around. But it's just so much more convenient, and we have, well, we have plenty of wealth. So I don't really see any reason. We're gaining 500 per month right now. So let's do, like, five-day ticks. We should be able to watch this guy load installation at Earth, and there he goes. He's already off to Wolf Harrington. And there he is. He's, he's on his way back home already. Okay, so now if we go to Wolf Harrington, we can say your job with your mining is to launch them at Earth. And now, in five days, we should see these are going to start launching mineral packets. Just shooting them at Earth. We're collecting that, that resource now. 
And if we look at Wolf Harrington, we can see that Wolf Harrington does not even have, uh, should not have very much in stock anymore. They can launch, I think, 5,000 tons per year per mass driver. So, 5,000 divided by 12 months, you know, it's like 500 a month. So I've only done a couple ticks, and it's down to 280. I bet if we did another five-day tick, we'll see this go from 280 down again. Uh, but before we do that, we need to get our research lab activated. So Wolf Harrington, mining and maintenance. Let's do a, a one a five day tick. We're watching this number here, the stockpile. Yep, so it launched about 70. 69, pack, 69 tons worth of stuff. On its way to Earth. It's pretty good. Okay, so we have the new engine. Um, I'm hoping that we can get a... Um, get our civilian sector to go ahead and start launching some colony ships. It might be... No, I researched cryogenic tech. They use your research tech. Okay, now we have jump point theory. I'm like cranking through some of that stuff pretty quick. Grab sensors. We have no one who's good with sensors and fire control, really? Alright, Martin. Now's your time to shine, man. Do it. 22nd of November. So by the end of this year, we'll have graph sensors. Now we have four inactive research labs. Oh, apparently he, uh, he can only handle 15 labs. Okay. Well, our next best guy is in defensive systems. We could do some composite armor upgrades. Ken Ham. Sure, let's get him working on that. I mean, we're going to want to have good armor. And the logistics task group has completed orders. Now we can confirm on Mars. Nope, it actually did. Yeah, so when I, when I clicked... 50 times the current task, it added 50 more of what it was already doing. So next time I'll have to do 49. So we ended up with a little tiny bit of extra on both the moon and on Mars. That's okay. Um, I'm not going to worry about it too much. We could design a new engine. Um, I think what we do is uh, we check out our task group, see where he's currently at. He's hanging out around Mars at the moment. So let's send him back to Earth. Then go back to advances. We don't need him to do anything just yet. One active... Okay, got grab sensors done. Alright, we have a new White House huge colony ship. Huge C2 class colony ship. So, excellent. So now we're going to start see start to see some automatic colonization. Let's go check out their new ship. Show class designs. They have launched the... Huge C2. This ship has 25 cryogenic transport. Um, and I believe each cryogenic transport, they can transport a lot of people, can't they? Uh, cryogenic births, 250,000 people per haul. They've got 20 engines, high density duranium armor. They haven't designed, uh, no, the nuclear pulse engine I think is the newer one. The White House F1 is using the nuclear thermal. So yeah, they're using the new engine tech. They've got 19 fuel storage. It's kind of crazy. 17.6 billion range. It's only a 92,000 ton ship. But yeah, so we're going to play... This video is going to go just a little bit long. We're already at 34 minutes, but I want to at least get uh, our first colony with a few colonists. It's going to be a, a joyous day. So Ken, um, let's add all the research labs to you now since you know, you've already started on this project and we might as well. Actually, we still have one available lab. Hmm. Uh, Wiz finished grav sensors, so we probably want to do some better um, energy fuel consumption is pretty much always good. I don't know if we're going to be able to knock that out before we get it done, but now we can do our, our grav sensors. So I want to take the discovery class, copy the discovery class. And we can now add in gravitational survey sens sensors, which are going to allow us to survey. And notice how it costs the exact same amount of iridium. This is what I was hoping was going to work out. So, um, we're going to design a ship. 
We're going to call it the, the Discovery Mark II, probably. Since this is going to be a little bit better at stuff. Um, actually, you know what? Maybe we should just have a second class. How bad would it be? Do you think it'd be a good idea to have a geological and gravitational survey sensors on our survey ships? That way they, they could just do both. We could just have one class of ship that does both. I kind of like the way that, that sounds. I'll leave I'll leave it, you know, we can talk about it in the comments, but uh, it just, it, it costs extra, but not by that much. It's only 100 tons of, of iridium. And uh, I think we have quite a bit of iridium. How much iridium do we have? Iridium. We have 57,000 tons of iridium. I think we can afford to throw a couple extra sensors on there. So why don't we add gravitational survey sensors? It's got the nuclear thermal engine, so we should definitely upgrade that. It's still quite cl quite fast. A lot of people were saying that because the ship is going to need to refuel, what we should do is we should say, okay, if the ship can operate for 213 days at full power, then it would probably make sense to have a shorter deployment time because you know the ship's going to have to refuel. And then you just give them the opportunity to do shore leave, which makes sense. Why don't we go for the, a shorter deployment time, which means that we can also drop some of our engineering spaces, which speeds it up tremendously. Uh, well, I don't remember what it was. It was like 1700 a moment ago. This is with both sensors, only this old engine. We can say new armor. Takes our, probably going to take our tonnage down by a little bit. Yep. And then what we could do is... Hmm. I think before we actually like finish this ship off, we should probably design a new engine, possibly even wait for that fuel efficiency tech of 0.7. We know for sure this is going to be a military class ship, so do we want to have military quality engines on it? Doesn't really need them. I could design a new commercial engine and use that. All right, well, I'm going to take a break here and, uh, you know, let me know what your thoughts are. I'm going to probably poke around a little bit with the engines and see what we can design, but um, we'll go from there. So thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you again same time, same place tomorrow. See you soon.